We concluded that the Illagers were exiled from the Villager civilizations because they were experimenting with the powers of life and death, and we know that to some extent they've been successful, considering that Evokers carry totems of undying, items that literally grant new life at the point of death. Now, they live on the outskirts of society in the Woodland Mansions, where it appears that they're continuing their experiments, converting Villagers into Ravagers, and using huge stockpiles of blue, light blue, and cyan wool to construct replicas of Steve. At the end of my last theory, I hypothesized that perhaps those Steve clones may have inadvertently led to the creation of the game's zombie menace. But that still left us with a lot of questions unanswered. What's the deal with the fake end portal rooms that you can also find in the Woodland Mansions? And why are there these giant replicas of cats and chickens hidden inside those buildings? I mean, those are some weird details that I made a big to-do about in the last episode that I didn't actually have the chance to explain away. And then, there's the issues with the Vindicators themselves. Why are their eyes blue? We established last time that they're former villagers, and we know that every other villager in the game has themselves green eyes, including other illager types like the Evoker. So then, why are the Vindicator's eyes specifically blue? Again, something that probably has itself a lore-based explanation out there somewhere. And lastly, a question that I think we were all thinking at the end of the last episode, if the illagers are indeed trying to create Steve clones, is it possible that they accidentally created Herobrine in the process? Who I know is an established creepypasta and isn't an official thing in the game, but still, could he have been? Is it possible that he's an official part of this game's lore? Today we're cracking open the first of this little three-pack of diet theories. The fake end portal rooms, why they exist, and their connection to a fascinating and incredibly tragic real-life story that may tell us a lot more than we expect about the history of these Minecraft villains. So pull out your nether wart, water, and sugar, my friends. Today we are going swift. As I brought up in the last episode, there are lots of strange rooms hidden throughout the Woodland Mansion hideouts, but none of them are as suspicious as the fake end portal rooms, in which the Illagers have used green and orange wool to roughly recreate the layout of an actual end portal. I mean, that's pretty darn weird. Like, there's lots of weird details in games that may or may not have themselves a greater lore importance, but in this case, to take an end game location and place it in the hands of the villains in a way that they're trying to recreate it, it's definitely the devs trying to tell us something. Especially when you consider that they were included in the game so much later than the end portals themselves. Like, maybe if the Woodland Mansion came first, then this would be them trying to hint at this mysterious stronghold's existence, hidden somewhere out there in the world, and how to use it. But end portals have practically been in the game since the very beginning, since version 1.0.0, whereas Woodland Mansions were added to the game five years later. You don't put stuff like that in arbitrarily. It feels like a detail that, if we're somehow able to crack it, will actually tell us a lot about the story of of this game, and I think, I think I'm beginning to wrap my head around what it all means. Now, let's think through this logically. The fact that the Illagers are trying to build a portal for themselves tells us a few important details. One, Illagers have somehow managed to see a stronghold at some point, already an impressive feat, and two, not only did they see a stronghold, they somehow were able to understand that it was important enough to want to try and recreate it for themselves. Now, something that I didn't get to talk too much about last time was the whole wool thing. I've already mentioned them using green and orange wool for their fake end portals, and that would be interesting on its own, but that's not the only instance of unusual wool usage inside the mansions. For one, none of the beds in the mansion are real beds, despite real beds having existed for years before the implementation of Woodland Mansions. Instead of crafted beds, Illagers attempt to recreate what a bed looks like by using white wool and various colors of carpet. Talk about itchy, and like, zero back support. It's no wonder the Illagers are always so cranky. Illagers also have themselves map rooms, which, once again, don't use crafted maps, but use carpet on a table to create the illusion of a map. All of this reeks of a real-world practice called cargo culting. You see, cargo cults are an absolutely fascinating phenomenon that actually happened in the aftermath of World War II. Imagine this. You live on a tiny, remote island in the middle of the ocean, with just your fellow tribesmen, completely secluded from the rest of the world. And then, all of a sudden, giant metal birds appear out of the sky, making 
loud roaring noises. The birds come to a stop on your island and out of them step humans. People that look like you but different. Different skin tones, different hair colors. And they come bringing things that you never could have imagined. Pills that save lives, clothes in bright colors and new materials, food in metal containers, objects that can take down the fiercest warriors with just the push of a button, machines that travel fast and never get tired. Sometimes they bring all these things and they're flying birds. Sometimes these things just fall onto the island. While they're there, these visitors take time to build things. They clear long strips of land where their birds come and go. They put up these tall towers where they can be closer to the heavens and where they talk to themselves all day while wearing these strange ear coverings. They erect tents and shelters where they live. And then after a year or two of these visitors coming and going, suddenly the birds stop landing. Everything that came with them goes away. They were like gods and you, not fully understanding what brought them there in the first place, try everything to get them to come back. This is exactly what happened to the small populations of indigenous people on the Melanesian islands of the South Pacific during World War II. Islands like Vanuatu, Fiji, New Guinea, and the Solomon Islands. Here they were, societies completely removed from the rest of the world, existing in their own self-contained bubbles when all of a sudden, Japanese troops land on the island with ships and planes, carrying guns and medicines and supplies for their troops. Suddenly you're aware of an entire world out there, a world that is so far beyond where your civilization currently is. And then these people start building things like airstrips and control towers for their planes. They start airdropping supplies onto the island, causing crates of cargo to literally rain down from the heavens. Later on in the war, it would be allied forces using these islands, bringing even more visitors and even more technology. But when the war ended and the troops suddenly stopped coming and the airdrop stopped happening, some of the villagers were rightly left confused as to why it had all ended. Some claim the reasoning was that nobody was running the airports anymore, and they started cults dedicated to rituals that involved lighting up the runways, waving signal cones around. They started to imitate the practices that they had seen the soldiers using. They carved headphones from wood and wore them in fake control towers that they built. They started to mimic the marching parades and the training drills that they had watched these visitors perform. They even used rifles that had been left behind, or when they ran out of those, they started carving new ones from local wood. They built life-sized replicas of airplanes and cut more runways into the jungles of the island just hoping to attract more planes. I mean, these were places and practices that seemed so important to the visitors when they were on the island, so maybe doing them again would summon them back. It's a wild story, right? And really, when you think about it, it's pretty darn sad, too. These people were operating under the idea of, if you build it, they will come, but they never came again. Now, we obviously know that simply operating the ground section of an airport isn't gonna magically summon supply drops, but to these islanders, how could they have thought any differently? Gods suddenly arrive from the heavens and then leave. And so you, not properly understanding the cause and effect of the whole thing, try to recreate the things that those visitors cared about. And thus the term cargo cult was born. Meaning a group of people who perform rituals without fully understanding the real mechanisms that work behind them. Now, the reason I tell you this story is that I believe that is exactly what we're seeing with the illagers. They see something called a bed, and they try to recreate it using a bunch of wool. But they're missing the point and about three wooden planks. It's just like the islanders sitting in fake radio towers with wooden headphones. On the surface, they look the same. It is parallel, but in reality, they're completely different. It's the same thing with the illager carpet maps, and it's especially true of their fake end portals. Anyone who's actually been to the end knows that you need to insert Eyes of Ender into the end portal frame blocks, and that the presence of the lava doesn't really matter at all. But the illagers, though, they seem convinced that all that was really important in that stronghold was the color, the number, and the arrangement of the blocks. This is especially true since they have access to lava in other rooms of the mansion, but they don't choose to use it in their recreation of the end portals. I mean, even the giant cat and chicken rooms in the woodland mansions seem tied to the cargo cult story. Just like the villagers of Melanesia built replicas to the giant metal birds that came onto their island, the airplanes, so too are the illagers building replicas of these animals, I guess. I, I don't really know. I said earlier in this diet theory that to recreate a portal room, the illagers had to have first seen a stronghold, and secondly had to understand that it was somehow important. What I think all of this is telling us is that they must have seen an active end portal. It most likely indicates that they saw something go into, or more accurately, come out of that end portal. I think that this may be our strongest evidence yet that the ancient race of